Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at some of the facts, statistics, and issues relating to Oregon's forests. Everybody loves the forest, that much we know. Yet people are always asking us questions about forests, ranging from forest types, to ownership, to what issues are facing our forests. This presentation will take a quick look at some of these forest facts and hopefully give you a better understanding about Oregon's forests. Today's presentation is brought to you by the Oregon Forest Resources Institute. What is OFRI? OFRI was established in 1991 by the Oregon Legislature to help educate Oregonians about our forests and to encourage environmentally sound forest practices among those who own and manage forest land. Public outreach through displays, tours, and presentations such as this one are a large part of our work. We also manage many other programs aimed at educating Oregonians about their forests, including public outreach, landowner workshops, K-12 programs for students and teachers. We have a 10-acre working forest inside the Oregon Garden to use for education and interpretation. And we have an extensive library of resources based on timely forest topics, all of which can be ordered free from OFRI by visiting our website. Here's an easy question. What's so great about our forests? There are lots of answers. Forests supply the oxygen we breathe. They provide habitat for countless fish and wildlife species. The forests are a great family-friendly playground. Forests help clean the air by capturing and storing greenhouse gases, such as CO2. Forests offer a great aesthetic alternative to cities. They provide social benefits for our growing population. And they provide us with the wood products we use on a daily basis. The list of what the forests provide can go on and on, but this is only a 20-minute presentation, so let's move on. So how much forest do we have? Oregon has 30.2 million acres of forest land. That equates to roughly 48% of its total land area. People want to know, are we losing our forest land? Since Europeans first arrived more than 400 years ago, the amount of forest land in the state has remained fairly constant. Nearly 99% of the forested acres that were here then are here today. Only about 1% has been lost to development. What types of forest are out there? It may surprise you to learn that there are no fewer than 12 forest types in Oregon. But for simplification, we'll stick to our four dominant ones. Hemlock spruce forests are found in the cool, wet climate of the Oregon coast. On both sides of the Willamette Valley are Douglas fir forests, our largest forest type. In the Cascades and expanding into southern Oregon is the mixed conifer zone. And finally, east of the Cascades, our forests are dominated by ponderosa pine. Yet even within these larger forests, you'll find a wide variety of tree species. Let's look at forest ownership. Many people know we have both public and private forest lands, but don't know the difference. To start with, over half of all forest lands in Oregon are owned by the federal government. Next in line are private landowners. These are the major producers of wood products. Our state, county, and municipal forest lands make up 4% of our forest land. And lastly, Native American tribes own about 2% of Oregon's forest lands. Keep that ownership in mind. 60% is owned by the federal government, and 34% is privately owned. These numbers will become important when we begin talking about forest harvest levels. Here's a map of forest ownership in Oregon put out by Oregon's Department of Forestry. It's tough to read, but if you look closely, you'll notice that the bulk of the federal ownership is in the Cascade Mountains and eastern Oregon. The majority of the private ownership extends from the Willamette Valley to the coast, and with differing ownerships come a wide variety of land management. Let's discuss land management in a bit more detail. Time for another Forest Fact Break, brought to you by the Oregon Forest Resources Institute. Today's topic? Forest Management Oregon forests come in all shapes and sizes, large and small, young and old. In any Oregon forest, chances are that forest management is taking place in one form or another. But what does that actually mean? What is forest management? Think of a forest as a complicated system. All the parts need to work together, and someone is in charge of making them work to reach a certain goal. 
That someone is a forest manager. Hello. Now, forests are managed for different goals. Some are managed for wood products, others for wildlife habitat, and some have a mix of goals. Forest managers figure out what needs to happen to reach those goals. Could be planting and growing trees, could be thinning or harvesting trees, could be altering the habitat to favor one species over another. There are three common types of forest management in Oregon. Reserve management usually means managing a forest for older habitat or wilderness. Wood production means managing to create the wood supply that we use every day. And multi-resource is usually a mix of styles to cover a range of values like wood, habitat, recreation, and lots more. Regardless of what they're managed for, there are plenty of environmental, social, and economic benefits that come from all types of managed forests. Forest management ensures that our forests stay healthy, productive, and sustainable for a long, long time. And that's the story on forest management. Check out more forest fact breaks or visit OregonForest.org. Yay, forests! What are some styles of management in Oregon? The Department of Forestry has identified three general management strategies. Reserve strategy. This is management aimed at providing older forest habitat. That doesn't mean no harvest. If big old trees are the objective, there may be harvest to spur the growth of the biggest trees and get them bigger, faster. Multi-resource strategy. This management aims to find a balance between the environmental, social, and commercial values of a forest landscape. Habitat for wildlife and fish, recreation, and harvesting wood products. Multi-resource forests are looking to have it all. Wood production strategy. These lands are actively managed for wood production. Their main goal is growing medium-sized, healthy trees fast. But as you'll see in a minute, Oregon's Forest Practices Act means that even production forests offer protection for our water and wildlife habitat. So how do the management styles compare to each other? This chart shows that there is a fairly even balance in the forest management strategies across Oregon. 31% of our forests are managed for reserve forests, 33% of our forests are multi-resource, and 36% are being managed for wood production. Let's keep in mind the 60% federal ownership statistic. Most of that federal land is being managed as reserve forest land. But America is still using wood products at an increasingly rapid rate. So we see the wood supply becomes increasingly dependent on our private forest lands. As this chart shows, combining the two green tones, in Oregon, less than 35% of our forest lands are currently producing over 67% of all wood products. So is one type of management any better than another? On the contrary, all three types of forest land management strategies make a major contribution to the environmental, economic, and social values of all Oregonians. It takes all three to create long-term forest sustainability. Moving on, let's take a look at the economic power of our forests. Oregon forests employ a wide variety of workers, including foresters, scientists, educators, mill workers, and many more. Over 76,000 direct living wage jobs can be attributed to our forests. Indirect jobs attributed to our forests is estimated to be near 80,000. Our forest sector accounts for over $5.2 billion in total annual income, $3.5 billion of which is employee payroll, including benefits. The economic leader of our forests is clearly softwood lumber. Currently, Oregon leads all other states with the production of softwood lumber. Often a conversation about forest economics is immediately followed by a discussion about ecological protection. How is Oregon protecting its forest lands? Thanks to the Oregon Forest Practices Act of 1971, we have a set of laws that governs the practice of forests, regardless of ownership or management objective. These laws have been continually strengthened over time based on new scientific findings. The Oregon Forest Practices Act created a standard of practice that mandates, among other things, a set of protective measures for all forest land. Here's just one. Time for another Forest Fact Break, brought to you by the Oregon Forest Resources Institute. Today's topic, reforestation. Oregon contains a lot of forests and a lot of trees. One, two, three, four, five, Too six. many to count. 
Sorry. To supply the wood and paper products that we use every day, we need to cut down and replant a lot of trees. But here's something to think about. Each year in Oregon, for every 300 trees growing in our forests, we harvest just one of them. And for every one tree we harvest, we plant an average of not one, not two or three, but four trees. We call it reforestation. And get this, it's the law. Oregon law requires successful reforestation after each harvest to make sure we replace our forests quickly. Oregon landowners plant between 30 million and 40 million new trees after harvest every year. Whoa! Trees are a renewable resource, and reforestation helps make sure that future Oregonians will have forests just like we have, providing wood products, clean air and water, and wildlife habitat. And that's the story on reforestation. Check out more forest fact breaks or visit OregonForest.org. Yay, forests! First and foremost, the Oregon Forest Practices Act requires prompt reforestation and harvest. If you harvest trees in Oregon below a certain level of stocking, you have to plant new ones. It's the law. Every year, some 40 to 50 million trees are replanted across Oregon. From the time of harvest, landowners have 12 months to begin replanting. Healthy trees and modern forestry practices have resulted in a nearly 100% success rate for establishing trees after harvest. You harvest the trees, you've got to replace them. Rule number one. Public focus groups always tell us their number one concern relating to our forests is water quality. The Oregon Forest Practices Act assures the protection of Oregon's water resources. Each stream or river is classified based on its size. Each size class restricts harvest to a certain distance from the stream side. These are known as buffer zones. The application of herbicides and fertilizers is restricted near streams to ensure water quality is not compromised. The Oregon Forest Practices Act lays out a wide array of wildlife habitat protective measures, including leaving a certain number of green trees, snags, and logs per acre of harvest. These remaining artifacts represent important nesting and foraging opportunities for wildlife. Harvest must be avoided in areas of sensitive bird nesting, roosting, or watering sites. This gets a lot of attention due to species such as the spotted owl and the marbled miralette. Protection of our forests is one topic that always seems to be on the public's mind. What are some others? In 2010, OFRI commissioned the latest in a series of public opinion studies to gather and compare Oregonians' values and beliefs about their forest over time. Finding out what the public thinks and wants from their forests helps guide OFRI's educational and landowner programs. So what did we find out? Here are the top five issues related to Oregon's forests. Water quality, fish and wildlife habitat, forest economy, losing forest land to development, fire. Some of these have moved up or down the list in time, but of special note, water quality and fish and wildlife habitat are always at the top of the list. Finally, let's take a brief look about what's new in Oregon's forests. Our forests, which have been here for thousands of years, are revealing new values, both ecologic and economic. One of the newest values we're finding is the potential to use wood biomass as a renewable source of energy. Wood biomass is shaping up to be an exciting opportunity because it offers what we call the triple win. It improves forest health, fire resiliency, and wildlife habitat by encouraging the thinning of overstocked forest stands. It creates an inexpensive renewable energy source for rural utilities. It would create an economic opportunity for rural economies around Oregon. Another hot topic relating to global warming is the role our forests are playing in climate change, or more accurately, the role they are playing to help temper climate change. Our forests help control atmospheric carbon, CO2, by preventing fire. A forest fire can release more CO2 into the air than most metropolitan areas release in a year. Properly managed forests can reduce the risk of these uncharacteristically large fires keeping forests in forests. We lose any benefits of forest once we lose them to other non-forest uses. Planting new forests. Prompt reforestation helps get new trees up and running and using atmospheric CO2 to grow big and healthy. 
and where the production of alternative materials such as steel or concrete releases tons of greenhouse gases, wood products actually lock in atmospheric carbon and store it long after it has become a 2x4 or a chair. Time for another Forest Fact Break, brought to you by the Oregon Forest Resources Institute. Today's topic, carbon capture. Do you use a car, turn on the lights, or use a microwave? Here's a simple one. Do you breathe? <gasps> Most of us do. Doing ordinary things every day creates loads of carbon dioxide, otherwise known as CO2. In small batches, it isn't that big of a deal. But together, all that carbon dioxide is accumulating in our atmosphere and contributing to global climate change. And the level of carbon dioxide we create is rising every single year. Is there anything that can help? Forests to the rescue! Forests absorb carbon dioxide from the air like a giant sponge. And what's great is they hold on to the carbon for a really, really long time. People who like science call this carbon sequestration. Trees not only capture the carbon, they keep it. The trees and plants use carbon to grow bigger and stronger, releasing oxygen in the process. Even after a tree is made into things, like houses, furniture, or even skateboards, the wood holds onto that carbon as long as it's still wood. In fact, a 2x4 can be up to 50% carbon. Pretty cool. So how can we help forests to help the atmosphere? First, we need to keep forest land as forests. Once a forest becomes a parking lot, its superpowers are gone. Second, we need to plant and grow all the forests we can. Replanting after harvest, or even planting a forest where there wasn't one, helps out big time. And finally, choose wood products for buildings and furniture. Wood is renewable and requires less energy and water to manufacture than steel, plastic, or concrete. And wood products store carbon for the rest of their useful lives. And that's the story on carbon capture. Check out more forest fact breaks or visit OregonForest.org. Yay, forests! Forest products as a green building material. One of the great arguments of natural resources remains. Is it better to cut down a tree or mine our building materials and make steel I-beams? Wood products are coming out on top of the green values category thanks to the fact that wood products are renewable and recyclable. New trees planted where the old ones were cut means we will always have a supply of renewable wood. The chart shows the comparison between using steel and wood to fabricate a 10 by 100 foot wall. The steel wall would require almost four times as much energy to produce and over three times as much water. Does the steel wall cut down any trees? No, but it uses up a surprisingly large amount of our other resources in its journey to become a building product and contains none of the other benefits associated with wood products and the forest they're created from. Oregon's forests are providing an important balance among the environmental, social, and economic benefits our citizens are looking for. If we keep those three values in balance, we'll be able to sustain the environmental, social, and economic values our forests provide for generations to come. To find out more, please visit the Oregon Forests Resources Institute website, oregonforests.org.